Where culture and sports collide, I'm your boy Bubba Dub, and I got my big homie right here, Big Glenn, Big Baby, David! <laughs> big Baby! Man, what y'all smoking weed when y'all been using the NBA? What y'all smoking weed before the game, bro? <laughs> oh, man. I did. Show my girls, did I too. did, I did, because I have real bad anxiety sometimes. Bruh. Bullshit. You get one to get high, nigga. Keep it one, you get one to get I high. I do, I know, I do. I got, I got bad anxiety sometimes. Okay, you got bad, okay. I got bad anxiety, so, uh, and then I got ADD like crazy. Okay, okay. So it's like, I, I, I gotta hit that thing you one time for the game. Or, like, after shoot around, before I go to sleep. Like, after I do the, well, after the shoot around, I tap it, boom, put it down. And then I... What was your normal day before the game? Like, what, like, the wake up all the way to the, like, what was you doing? Like, what was some shit that you, okay, Big Baby, like, had to do? Uh, if I knew I had a game, right, and I knew I had a tough opponent, yeah. I would get my rest. Okay. Right? So I would definitely, you know, go to bed early. Like, if I'm playing somebody like, like, who I used to be? Like, like Chris Bosh or something. Because okay. I know it would be a tough game. Long neck. Yeah. So, Brontosaurus, like. So I, you know, so I would, I would, I would literally go to shoot around, day the game, you know, do my routine because I used to follow Kevin a lot. So I was his rookie. I was his rookie. So a lot of stuff he did, I had to fake like I was doing it too. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? But you know, I eat a little turkey burger, yeah. you know, with little pancakes and spaghetti. You and KG never fired one up. Oh, what? You, you in the big ticket? <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Probably like a million blunts. Another thing, you know, because you play us, you athletes, you know, y'all big time athletes. Uh, was there any thoughts in them hotel room when y'all get there? Like, get lined up. I ain't gonna say women. Nice. You people. know what? You know what? You know what? Like, I like, I, when people took, ask, like, what was that? Like, like I had bitches in my room, like, sneaking up to my room, trying to. No, it wasn't like that. You did. It was more like, if you was a savage, you can be a savage. Yeah. But some guys, you know, they're not savages, you know. But I was a savage one point in my career. So you, you, you at the game, y'all blowing a team out. You on the bench, you know, you're going you, 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 you to play, you chilling right now. Have you ever been thinking about what you're going to do after the game? Like, this female was on your mind. Like, you really you, you was there, but you really wasn't there. All my, all my career high points was because a girl was in the audience. For real. So no you ever problem. had sex before a game? Oh my God. Oral yes. sex. Like you could tell, you could do this while you at the free throw line. <laughs> yeah. For, no, I, I used to have, I used, look, you know what's so crazy? I used to have one young lady, beautiful young lady. She's yeah. a great woman. Young tender. She, she, she used to, she used to felt like she had to suck my dick before the game. Ooh, now you talking my language. Now I'm going to talk it. Like just to have me relax. She's yeah. like, I want to have something to do with, with you being successful and playing, you know. How and that, that, and that was our feel? little secret. How did like, that make you feel? Knowing before the game, you figured get, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She figured go down through that. Like, how did that make Big Baby feel? <laughs> NBA champion you feel? Like, you know, you chilling. You know, you done spoke to moms today and your sister today. Like, they telling you, babe, what you gonna do? I'm just chilling my mom. In your mind, I'm gonna get this dick up. <laughs> you know what? I appreciate her to this day. You got to. She's still blessing. She she can she you know what I mean? Like she can call me right now okay. and said, hey, I need my rent paid. <laughs> and I'll pay it. Because her, she got So you paying rent now. She shows some unconditional like love. So you saying it was worth it? It was worth it. We have we're good friends now to this day. She's she's always has a place in my career, oh, for geez. sure, of my oh, success. Really. Oh, y'all ready for the show today or what? <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting here with this dude right here, and woo, these stories are getting hotter and hotter by the day. <laughs> hey, we'll be right back here at Trash Talk. Stay tuned.
Gifts. Welcome back. In today's guest, I got a very special guest. Nong and Noble, y'all give it up for Steven Jackson, everybody. Give it up. Yeah. in the building. Yes. How you doing, my guy? Man, I'm blessed, man. Happy to be on, on the set with another NBA champion, yeah, with an up and coming legend. So yeah, man, I'm blessed. Happy to be here. Hey, man, I appreciate it, man. I'm going to get straight to it with you, though. I seen you last week at the Javante Davis fight, ooh, right? Ooh. I saw you, girl, and it gave me flashbacks on the TV because something happened in the crowd, and I seen you tuck your chain in. <laughs> Where I'm from, when a nigga took a chain and a nigga finna get busy. Yeah. <laughs> Gave me flashbacks. So, man, how was that, man? Watching that shit unfold. You know, I worked hard to, to kind of remove myself from that. You know what I'm saying? When you really come from that, the goal is to get away from that and not try to be in them situations. You know what I'm saying? So I worked hard to get away from that. But anytime I'm somewhere with my wife, that's my priority. I don't care what else going on, who you trying to see or whatever, this is my priority. And when, the, when it's to the point where she getting knocked down and uncomfortable, once I tuck the chain in, if any disrespectful word come out after that, then it's over. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? I thank God that everything was able to stay calm. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers like Wallow and them pulled up to keep the peace and shit. But all the other stuff I had nothing to do with. You know what I'm saying? I was just protecting my wife. I had the best seat in the house. Oh yeah, I saw you on the, the TV. The best seat in the house. I saw my you. That's crazy, because you know when I watched that, I said, he ain't even on that no more. I know. I was like, he ain't. Somebody must have disrespect his wife, or yeah. somebody dear to him, for him to, act, to to get up and start. Hey, 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 because I I I know the, your transformation, you know, and, and what you've done from a basketball player, you know, uh, speaking out, you know, about just rights and things like that. Like, um, I knew like somebody had to push a button. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's talk about that, man. Like, I, I we could talk about basketball all day, but. The transition of what you've done from all the smoke to all this, you know, how has that been? And kind of talk about that process. It, 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 it's just really, you know, Allah's favor, man. Like, man, man, you talk, like when we had dinner last time, we talked about the things we able to do. You doing acting, you doing this now, all the stuff that we trying to do at the basketball. We wasn't the guys in the NBA that was on the commercials, that was getting all the love, you know what I'm saying? We, we was the heart of the NBA, but now, after basketball, we the gatekeepers. We, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm proud to say me and Matt are the gatekeepers. You know what I'm saying? In, in this space, in the podcast space. You know what I'm saying? Because we for, for so long, we was the guys behind the scenes. We wasn't the commercials. We wasn't the guys the NBA was talking about. We didn't get the love we deserved. You know what I'm saying? So now in this space, we happy to say that we, we controlling our own narrative. You know what I'm saying? We happy to say that we able to do something that's never been done before. You know what I'm saying? And even with the George Floyd shit, bro, I, didn't, I was at home chilling. I wasn't expecting to wake up and see somebody who I consider my twin dead for the world to see. I didn't ask for that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't ask to be the face of the biggest civil rights movement ever. I didn't ask for that. You know what I'm saying? I, I would rather him be here. You know what I'm saying? But all, all these things God put in my lap for some reason because he felt I could handle them. You know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I stuck my chest out. Speaking of uh, George Floyd, may he rest in peace. Uh, how did you feel about when Kanye made that comment he made about George Floyd. I had to address it because we all love Kanye to a certain extent, but I don't respect money. I respect morals. I don't give a fuck how much money you got. You still can be wrong. And to, to his credit, he say some real shit, but I've, I'm, I'm, from, I'm under the old law. I've never known it was cool to speak on dead people. That's never been cool where I'm from, in my neighborhood, who I was raised by. That's never been cool. So, so, and to say that if you're speaking on dead people, you cloud chasing. But how you a billionaire, you still cloud chasing. You know what I'm saying? Speak on other shit, you know what I'm saying? But, and I've been speaking up for him, his daughter, and her, and her mother all this time. It's no different with him. Say what you gotta say, do what you gotta do, just keep George's name out your mouth. I respect that. I respect that, man. You know, I, 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 you know, let's go back to basketball, right? <laughs> Because I got a chance to watch you from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And, and when I say, like, you taught me the grind. You know what I mean? We ain't far from each other. We right up the road from each other. <laughs> you, I ain't far you just because of Texas, grind. Louisiana. Like, 
your process during the NBA, how was it when you had a position, especially like with the Warriors and being that main guy, um, how was it? Because as a basketball player, when I watch, you know, you represented my culture. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I know you had to have like problems with that because people under just misunderstood you. Yeah, of course. How did you deal with that in the NBA? And like for other players to see that, you know, because no matter what, you were you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like talk about your path as far as just the way you came up because it was just awesome. I think, well, it all starts with AI. It all starts with AI, the way he came in, the way he did what he wanted to do. He showed us that we can be ourselves. We don't have to compromise nothing to be successful in basketball, right? It's about playing basketball. It's not about, it's about nothing else. They want to make it about all kind of other shit, but it's about what you do on that court, right? We all know it's a business and you have to make the business look a certain way, but at the end of the day, you don't have to compromise anything. I learned that from him. And also, you know, making it to the NBA, it's billions of people trying to get there. So, you know, when we got that opportunity, ain't nobody gonna take this from us. You know what I'm saying? As hard as we had to work to get here, you know what I'm saying? All the, all the, all the trials and tribulations we had to endure to get here when people counted us out from the jump. Being drafted the second to the last pick in the draft, breaking both of my feet before the draft, like, it, it, you know, it, it's a whole it's a whole bunch of shit that we, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I say again, you, you, you have in God's favor, you know what I'm saying? It was just meant for us to be in these positions because he knew what we'd do with it, you know what I'm saying? He knew we'd appreciate it, you know what I'm saying? And that's why it's easy for me to sit on the couch and talk about this shit because me and you bound damn to the same person. We've been through the same damn grind. We both was we both was talked about and misunderstood and counted out many a time. You know what I'm saying? But we still here. You know what I'm saying? So that's just the attitude that we always had. And it and it comes from, you know, rape being born and raised in Port Arthur, Texas, too. You know what I'm saying? The original Trillville, the only Trillville, Trillville. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, UGK. you know, I I was around a whole bunch of dumb shit and I could have been fucking my life off, but my city protected me, dog. The niggas in the street protected me, you know what I'm saying? The people around protected me. And uh, so I just, it, I, I just owe it to them to, to, to always represent PA right, you know what I'm saying? And every opportunity that I get, you know what I'm saying? I just try to take advantage of it because we don't get them often, bro. Guys like us don't get opportunities like this often. Um, shifting gears, uh, Stephen Jack, what you was talking about. Call um, me Stack, bro. Stack, stack. Yeah, man, yeah, you call me Stack, bro. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna be laughing at y'all calling me Stephen Jack. You ain't never called me Stephen Jack in my never life. Never in my dog. life. You never said that. <laughs> Stack five. Yeah. Uh, how? What was? What was y'all mindset when y'all beat the Dallas Mavericks in 07? Like, I, f I feel like the league didn't want that, but it, but it happened. It was the beginning of the season, and we all went to a strip club just to hang out, like you know, team bonding. And um, as we were in there, you know, Al, Al Hampton was like, "Bro, let's go to another spot. This spot ain't popping, but it's a whole bunch of people in there." So as we leaving, uh, as I'm getting in my car, some guys is chasing Jamal Tinsley outside of the club. And uh, you know, I ain't that I ain't that type of dude. I could have got my car burnt on off like damn. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you did. For real, this is my, my teammate. I grab my tool, I hop out, I run over there, hit one of them with the tool because they're about to jump him. But as I when I hit one, it's like 15 more dudes coming out. I've been in this situation before. So before they get to snuffing me out, I let off something in the air. Wow, wow. Everybody start running. As I'm running to my car, one of them had got in his car already. And, and, and hit the gas and came at me, boom, hit me in the air. I hit the ground. As I'm hitting the ground, all my teeth come out of my mouth. I stand up, my lips shattered. I'm standing up, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just happy I'm alive. And so the way the uh, parking lot was, he had to turn around and come back my way to get out the parking lot. So his lights hit me in the face and I snapped out of it. As I snapped out of it, one of my teammates started dumping at him from the other side. So I pulled my shit out and we started chasing him. I shoot him about three times, and my, about three, four times, my gun empty, and I pass out. Wake up in the police car. Me and Marquise Daniels in, in cuffs. I'm in, I'm in, you know this story. This is all a true story. I'm, I'm unconscious, my mouth bleeding, teeth gone, lips shattered. And I, I wake up because Marquise Daniels kicking the window because he think I'm dying. You know what I'm saying? I'm just out. You know what I'm saying? I, I come up out of it, and as I come up out of it, they open the door, they check on me and shit, and they let us go because we all had gun lights and we wasn't running. We was the Indiana Pacers. They knew how to find us. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't running and shit. And uh, 
that was my second strike. Cause I was already on probation from the brawl in Detroit, you, you know what I'm saying? So they're like, we gotta get this nigga fired. He's been there two years, god damn, you know what I'm saying? So we ended up going to Golden State. It was the best thing for me, bro, because, because I, was with, I was with all my homies. BD, Al, Matt, my, you know what I'm saying? I was with a lot of niggas I grew up with. You know what I'm saying? Jason Richardson, you know what I'm saying? I was with a lot of guys and we had a coach that didn't give a fuck what we did as long as we played basketball, bro. He let us smoke in his house, you know what I'm saying? He, I'm talking about, he, he had uh, the uh, ER trying to get our hotel rooms. With, with humi when we check in hotel, it's humidifiers on our floor already. They already tell him to put us on the smoking floor. This how, this, how, this how dope it was, bro. So we went extra for him on the court, you know what I'm saying? We already loved to hoop, you know what I'm saying? And he had just came out of situation with the Mavericks, remember? They, they fired him, you know what I'm saying? And they wanted to give him his money. He was beefing with Cuban. So, we, you know, we played them four times that year. We beat them every time. So they knew it was smoke. They knew it was smoke, you know what I'm saying? But to him, that was a championship game. That meant everything to him. Like, he didn't even care what happened after we beat them. He just wanted to beat the Dallas Mavericks and beat Mark Cuban. So being the number one seed, it's never been done. You know what I'm saying? So our whole attitude was, man, we've been beating these niggas all year. This ain't nothing different, you know what I'm saying? We really, the only, the only two people that really didn't back down from us was Stackhouse and, and Josh Howard. But Dirk, lights out. <laughs> lights out. <laughs> it was over. I remember that shit. It was I over. I can remember that. Like, that shit was just hype, man. Baron Davis, you. That shit was crazy. It was super, that. super crazy. But, that's, but that makes me think about trash talking. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah this motherfucker shit. right here, with, let's talk about that. When you was playing, motherfucker, who was you looking like licking your chops at? Like I'm gonna bust his ass because you was a you you had the you feel what I'm saying you had people on your list who was on that small four shooting guard list that you you like okay I, I need to yeah well well I mean you know you know you know how how how, how we take pride in basketball you know what I'm saying I'm not racist but I made sure I killed every white boy that's one thing that's one thing you know what I'm saying. One thing. Oh, he checking me. One oh. thing, yeah, I, I, I got to go crazy. <laughs> What's one, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And to be, to, to keep it 100 funky, it was this one white boy that I could not fuck with, Kirk Heimlich. Kirk Heimlich. He used to lock me up, dog. Kirk Shout out to Kirk Heimlich, dog. I got to give him his props. Yeah, Kirk Heimlich was a problem. Was a Went problem. to Kansas. Yeah, he used, yeah, he used to give boys problems. But I used to, but I mean, I want to smoke with everybody because I had because I had something to prove, you know what I'm saying? Like, but you know when you go against, when you go against the Kobe's and the LeBron's and all that, you want to have a big game. It just don't turn out how you how you how you playing it all the time, you know what I'm saying? Against them motherfuckers, because you know that's that's a different level of the game. Yo, you have some um. I don't think I'm gonna give you your flowers. I don't think like this newer generation know just how good you really was though. You know, they get like, oh, they just stack five, woo -de woo No, stack five really had some motherfucking game, man. You come from a uh, Butler Community College? Yeah, I went there for two weeks. Two weeks, out of here. So we, for two weeks there, they ain't have no money, it's time to move on. Cause I know the Warriors, you did your thing, but I feel like that motherfucking, I feel like the coming out was that ATL stack five. I know what you did over there with MJ and Charlotte, but that hey, ATL. I was just about to say that. So, so I'm gonna I'm 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 agree with you and disagree with you. I think Charlotte, Charlotte was, was really when I showed who I could be. Because coming out of San Antonio, I came here to Atlanta, you're right. And the only reason I came here because San Antonio wanted to pay Ginobili instead of paying me, which was some bullshit. So I was like, well, I go to Atlanta for a year and prove myself again, and I had a crazy year here. I went crazy, but the team, you know what I'm saying, was fucking sucked. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was just, a, it was a ter yeah, it's super trash. Terrible situation, so, but um, I did that with the intent to see this some inside shit right here, uh, Bub. I did that. Mike Brown was my coach in San Antonio. Uh -huh. He left when I left and went to Indiana. So he told me, go do this one year in, uh, in Atlanta. We, they, uh, money come off the books next year uh -huh. and we're going to sign it. Because he, he went with Rick Carlisle in Indiana. So I knew I had to do that one year there and I was going to get my bread. So I, that's why I went out there and did work. You know what I'm saying? So that's how, But Charlotte was crazy. That was my first time taking the team to the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? I should have made the All-Star game that year. Yeah. yeah. Give it up for that. Yeah. Was MJ the owner then too? Yeah, yeah. MJ was the owner. 
put it like this. I'm still sponsored by Jordan. So. I said, give it up for that. Yeah. Give it up for that. Nah, that shit is crazy yeah. too. Yeah. That I, motherfucker I got that. shoes like like a store. Like yeah. got shit don't even come out yet. Cause I be, you know, Q Rich. Yeah, it should work. It should way crazy to mine. It should, should way crazy. Oh yeah. shit! What about Ray Allen? I heard he got Ray, Ray Allen. Like Q, Mike, Bibby, Ray Allen. Like they should way crazy. I, I, he, he signed me in 2010. They were some of the first ones on there. You know what I'm saying? So I've been on since 2010, but they've been on there since probably 2000 or something like that. Man, I wish I would have signed with Joy. Yeah, MJ, really? MJ, MJ, MJ dope, man. You know Joy, what what's that? up, bro? Uh, he, got, he got me into NASCAR now. He got a team in NASCAR. He got me and Matt into NASCAR now. So Joy. MJ, MJ, man. I'm going to ask you a question. What was the difference between Kobe, LeBron, and Tracy McGrady? Well, Kobe's mentality was just that set him apart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, of course he was nice. I'm talking about dumb nice, but his mentality, bro, it, it's just different. You know what I'm saying? You can't teach it. You just got to be born with it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of a lot of us call ourselves dogs, but what he had was different. You know what I'm saying? Because you know I like to, you know I like to hang out. I like to smoke. I like to do all that shit. But I still like to go out there and try to and try to bust a nigga ass. Nah, he gonna he gonna make sure he in shape. You know he ain't doing none of that type of shit. That's why I say he a different type of dog. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna get tired. He gonna, he gonna be way more prepared than any one of us. You know what I'm saying? So Kobe was just different, man. Tracy was just a unicorn. Like, you, 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 you would rarely see a nigga like Tracy McGrady, dog. The way he could score that, at, at that height, athletic, like, you don't, you don't see Tracy McGrady's come around often, dog. And who else you said? LeBron. Uh, well, I mean, like, I think we finally have, uh, a mascot for the perfect basketball player. You know what I'm saying? We looked for that for so long. We tried to find out MJ is the, the he's the perfect basketball player, but we talking about the look, the makeup of the perfect basketball player. The body, the game, the way he handles it. So like he is the perfect player. Like one thing that we all admire about LeBron, especially people from where I'm from, we all tried to bring our niggas in and put them in place to be successful. You know what I'm saying? He's the only one that got it right. He, I, 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 I tried it, I got it wrong, you know what I'm saying? He's the only person I know that got it right, bro. Just think, all the niggas we know that brought our homeboys in, tried to put them in place and do this, do that, play, you know what I'm saying? Go to school, do that. None of, none of us got it right. He, he mastered it, bro. So by that and the, and the way, and the person he is and the way he approached the game, like he is the mascot for the perfect basketball player ever. You know what I'm saying? And I got to give him that card. How you, how you, you big on the weed, I'm big on the weed, baby, you big on the weed. How you feel about NBA players can smoke now, right? Yeah. So how you feel, how you, how you think they would? So how you feel like they, do, it benefits them, do you feel like they benefits them to be able to smoke? Man, I'm, I know how it benefited me. And we had to, you know, sneak and do it. You know what I'm saying? We had to find loopholes, pay people. At one point, at one point, we knew that if we failed a drug test and stay in this drug program, we could still smoke as long as we was in the program. So we bleeded that for a couple years, you know what I'm saying? So. We needed it, bro. I know I needed it for a fact. I can speak for myself, bro, because, you know what I'm saying? People talk about uh, mental health and shit. My mental health went away when I started making money and I was able to take care of my family. I had mental health when I was in the hood, struggling, trying to figure out how to make it out. You know what I'm saying? For real. I, I, I can't deal with these motherfuckers that get money and all of a sudden dealing with mental health. It don't work like that. We was dealing with, you know what I'm saying, not eating, struggling, lights going off, not seeing mama for two days because she working at a refinery. You got to sleep at your grandmother's house and wear the same clothes, like all this type of shit, bro. Family dying because they can't afford medicine. We seen all this shit growing up in the hood at the bottom. Rats and roaches and shit. How in the hell you gonna have that same type of mentality or be dealing with the same in the same mind frame once you make it out of that? It don't make sense. I said I said some I same shit that. about another basketball player, yeah, Ben I Simmons. I don't understand that. I bro. felt like Ben Simmons was great until that shit happened in whatever happened in Philly. Then all of a sudden his back hurt. Now his foot hurt. Now he don't want to play ball no more. Fuck all that, man. Yeah. Put, your, put your big boy pants on. Let's go ball. Man. And, and, and that's the thing though. What's in question is not his body or if he's healthy, it's in here. How much you love the game, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it come down to. We can say whatever we want about him, but how much you love the game? You know what I'm saying? If, if, what? If you don't love that motherfucker, we love the game so much what we did. We played in the big three for a couple of years. And both of them got a chip. You dig what I'm saying? Straight up. Because we love the game. We didn't have to, but we love the game. We still want to play. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I know a lot of people would die for the opportunity he got now. You know what I'm saying? To play on the team with Kyrie and KD. Bro, you got to take advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? And like, where I come from, that's how, that's how you can tell people from where we from and people like Ben Simmons that ain't really from the bottom, bro. Like, them type of opportunities, dog, you got you to gotta relish them. They don't come often, dog. At all. There's only 500 jobs in the NBA. You know how many people try for the NBA a year? Yeah, a lot, a lot. That's why I don't understand when, when, when you be saying trash, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't get it because it's really hard sometimes. So, you you know, so that's why me and him go through arguments sometimes about trash because you think about it, you know, even though I'm on the bench, I'm still one of the top players in the world. Most definitely. Yeah, some niggas trash. we played. Uh, we stop. Trash. That, 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 that. But who though? <laughs> Brian Scalabrini was trash. The White Mamba. The White Mamba. <laughs> they had some trash, but you know what I'm saying? I went to a Laker game this year with Floyd. Mm -hmm. Watched the Lakers play Portland Trailblazers. So I got the Dame look, hit the three at the end on. Anthony Davis hit two shots. He came back down, hit another shot. Ran right by me. Trash! Everybody in the that. crowd looking. Floyd say, you gonna arrive, nigga. Just like that, he said, yeah. don't never think what you doing not getting out to these people. They know I'm not being malicious with this shit. Yeah, that's just yeah. that I want to see you play better. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Same way I told Dwight Howard. He was in his feelings behind some other shit. We, you know, we can't talk about it. <laughs> that's my nigga though. Me and Dwight Howard, we cool now. Uh -huh. And I tell the world, like when y'all was sitting down in the comments talking about, because I'm in there by myself, Jack. You know, y'all niggas talk. This nigga seven foot, got muscles in his face. Uh -huh. I'm talking shit to him, but you know, and people like, man, you look scared. I was. <laughs> but nah, but I had to break trash down to him too. Because Dwight Howard gonna be a Hall of Fame. I ain't no doubt about that. He no should have been top 75. Should be, yeah, exactly. But I was telling him, like, he's like, I'm not trash, I'm not calling you trash, but I'm saying your play. You get in some games, two minutes in, pow! <laughs> trash. Trash. <laughs> two seconds later, pow! <laughs> but you smiling though. Mm -hmm. Bitch, we need you. Trash. Then he get the concept what I'm talking about. Oh, I get it now, little bro. I see what you're saying now. Yeah, I know you are. You can make all this money. Nig any nigga making millions not trash. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that. Any nigga that's making millions not trash. But there's a lot of trash players. In the Man, there's some trash niggas, niggas in the league out. I played against. No, I, 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 I just don't want. I just don't want to throw niggas under the bus like that, man. But hey, bro, it, 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 I'm talking. About, it was some dudes. It was just so easy to score on. Like, you, like, you really don't need to be out here, bro. Like, lay up. Nah, dog. I'm telling you, dog. Dog. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do that. But, hey, you know what? I ain't gonna do that because I don't know where some of these people are right now. Yeah, yeah. Know what they got going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? We, we so ain't gonna do that too. I don't want to kick them if they down. You know what I'm saying? But I do know this, bro. It's some sorry motherfuckers that it came to that NBA. Whether, whether they make the money or not. You dig what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody wasn't good, especially to a person on that level. I don't just always want to call the players trash. I want to say some coaches out here in the world trash too. Oh, no question. No question. Yeah, the, 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 the worst coaches are the ones that never played. Span. To me, you know what I'm saying? I think, I think the best coaches are the guys that actually know how to deal with the players because they've been in those in-game experiences. You know what I'm saying? They know what's going on between the lines, not just on the sideline. There's so many people that, that get jobs just because they've been around the game that started as a, 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 a water boy. Then they moved to the tape room. Then now they're a trainer. Now they're assistant GM. Now they're a coach. You know what I'm saying? Instead of guys, so many guys that want to give back to the game, and as soon as they retire, want to be a coach or something like that, they make them go to college, like Jerry Stackhouse. They make them go to college and coach all these years first instead of coming straight to the NBA, where they just came from, where they can get the most game, where they can relate, relate to the most players. How do we stop that shit, though? Like, how, like we're, we're not in control of that. We're so, not in control of that, you know what I'm saying? But uh, they, and you know what? They know what they're doing. They say, you know what I'm saying? Why, why we got to complain about the number of black coaches for y'all to start hiring more black coaches? You, you, you know what I'm saying? We don't have to sit and complain about that shit. You, you should, uh, history should show you that most of the coaches that have the most championships are ex-players. Steve Kerr, ex-player. Phil, Phil Jackson, ex-player. Greg Pop isn't playing in the league, but he played basketball. You know what I'm saying? Doc Rivers, like all, all these coaches that got championships though, all these coaches that got championships are coaches that basically played the game. You know what I'm saying? Lenny Wilkins. You know what I'm saying? All these coaches, they played the game. You know what I'm saying? Pat Riley, they, they played the game. So and th th these are facts, bro, that they already know. You know what I'm saying? But now, 
you see the majority of the best players are black. Most, most you know what I'm saying? The majority are black, so and a lot of the, and a lot of them want to get in the game. But Jock Vaughn is a perfect example, dog. Look how they playing, because he can relate. I ain't saying Steve Nash can relate, but when have you seen a black guy or a black player fall into a job like that where he got Kyrie and KD? They they'll, they'll give him a team like. Uh, Sacramento or some team that's at the bottom first to see if he can prove himself and make him look bad. I played with Jock Vaughn in Orlando. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we was trash. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and, that, and that's what they do. We was trash. But how often a black coach walk into a job when you got two Hall of Famers already? I agree. I fucking You know what I'm saying? That, yeah. And so it, it, it's different. And, and they know all these things, bro. It's just, it's just that they don't talk about it. So, um, before we get up out of here, Jack, before we get up out of here, we also want to um, piggyback what he said about you and Matt Bones on your show, All the Smoke. Um, Y'all doing great things over there. Uh, like, like, you, like you said earlier, you and Matt were considered the man in the NBA. But outside of basketball now, y'all are them dudes. And um, I'll be honest, like you say, y'all paving the way. I wouldn't be where I'm at today from y'all watching y'all do y'all thing. That's just, that shit inspired me to, to want to have my own show and watch you and Matt do y'all thing with me and Big Baby trying to be a here. So we just want to thank you so much for pulling up here today at your busy schedule. Yes, so we just... Yes, we let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give y'all flowers too, bro, because like I told you the other day, it's just the beginning for you. I, I mean, we, I talked to you on way before you had the show about getting with you, and, and I'm just happy to see you because, you know, if you ain't out here rooting for your brothers, what you doing? And for you, you know what I'm saying, I, I love you like I love myself. You know what I'm saying? So anytime I see you win or doing something, you know what I'm saying, it just, it just brings joy to me because we the same dude. So anytime I can come out and support y'all, anything y'all need from me and Matt, dog, we here to do that. That's a bet. Y'all give it up for Steven Jackson, everybody. <laughs>